Um, I, um, it's so chilly here today and we have such a beautiful fire going on in our wood stove. I wanted to, um, do today's stream like right by our beautiful wood stove, but it's about connecting with nature. So I thought I should be out here in nature. You can see behind me, uh, plants that are going into our garden. I'm building a greenhouse. So that should be ready soon. As soon as it's all up and, and, uh, sorry, I'm like wrapping a blanket around me. It's definitely chilly. Um, <laughs> as soon as I get my greenhouse built, I'll, uh, bring you all in there and show you what we're doing. Um, and I'm doing that for a few reasons. One, uh, it helps me stay connected to nature, to be gardening. And two, um, I am as paranoid as a person can be when it comes to what is going to happen. Um, hi, Alexandra. Uh, I want to say hi to everyone. Hi, you all. And I'm so uh grateful to be sharing today with you um hi prem <laughs> oh subarna hi um so what was i gonna say um i saw a joke today that says when it comes to health care i trust medical professionals not spin doctors and Thank you. Thank you. I love the hearts. Thank you. And that's the thing. We're getting so much news that even now, uh, we were watching CNN last night and they were saying that the news that we've been fed was, uh, they're admitting a lot of false news because, uh, the politicians, the government did not trust us, the general public, to make wise choices if given the actual facts. So they wanted us to stay at home. Therefore, they told us face masks would not work. Now they're saying, yes, face masks do work. We just didn't want you out with your face masks. I'm like, on one side, I feel like, come on, treat adults like adults, treat human beings like intelligent beings. On the other side, we got a lot of like, not very bright people, I feel like, including many of our political leaders. And I'm not saying that Republican or Democrat, I'm saying it across the board. I'm not sure how much care about our well-being above and beyond their own, you know, political agenda and financial well-being. But that's a different live stream for another day. Um, so we're all at home. I'm lucky in that our home is in the woods and, you know, everyone here has a big chunk of land. Um, and there's a lot of trails that I can walk to from my house um, and no one, you know, I won't see anyone. I can walk for an hour and see like no one. So I'm very lucky and I want to share some of this with you. But you know, I've had my share of being in cities and uh, being in high pressure situations where I'm forced to be away from nature. Um, and during those years, I developed some techniques that I want to share with you all. Um, these can happen anywhere, anytime. Um, you can be riding a bus in an office building. Well, now we know where we all are. We're, we're at home. Um, so there's a few things that normally I would take a long time to explain and teach and all of that. But right now I'm just going to, uh, run through it really fast make certain assumptions. I don't care if it's what you believe for your entire life or what your belief system is. For this exercise, just make certain assumptions that can be used for this one time to get you to your meditative experience. And then from there, you can dismantle and plug whatever into your belief systems. One, know that we are eternal beings. 
it doesn't matter if you're from human origin or from other origin or some of you I've done past life readings for you're of human origin but you go off and you hang out with the angels and other collectives all the time. So you're like a human soul that spends a lot of lives incarnating with other collectives, races, species, you know, frequency of being. Some of you I've read for and you have lived a lot of lives, not originally human, but of other races. And some of you who are like so humble in this life, I look at you and I'm like, oh my God, when I see all your soul groups, you have been around for so long and lived with so many soul groups that your human soul group is only the latest of many cycles of life. So, um, <laughs> so understand that we are eternal beings. It doesn't matter where we started, our source of origin, where we've lived, how many incarnations we've had. Each and every one of us has agreed to be here in the life that we're in at this moment in time. I mean, that's always true. But right now, there's a gravitas to that statement that normally we don't, you know, think about. At every moment of your life, you have been in life by decision, choice, and agreement with your soul, right? So most of us, we've been going through our lives focusing on ourselves and our challenges and our personal growth. But right now, suddenly, all of that is sort of back plate boilered or whatever, like put on the back burner because we're focusing on getting our families and loved ones through all of this healthfully, getting the planet through this, getting humans through this, getting all the animal species and the plant species through this so that we can come together as one beautiful whole. It's a pretty big commitment. But if you are watching this video, I guarantee you are one of the people who has agreed to help with this project. So now is the time to stop worrying about your self-esteem issues, your self-doubt issues, any of that, and go forward as part of the army of love to help heal our planet. This begins with understanding, as I said, you're an eternal being. And when you think about your existence for all eternity, and you think about whatever tiny issues you are angsting about and self-abusing about, are like, we can start letting things go. If there are issues you need to deal with for your personal growth, you can pick them up later when Earth is safe. For now, just let it go and say, okay, time for me to become a a member of the army of love and heal this planet. You're like, that's great, but I'm stuck all alone in my apartment. <laughs> and, um, okay, so there's a lot of noise going on behind me. If, if it's too loud, let me know. I'll carry all my stuff indoors. Um, so they're doing some uh, road repair work there. <laughs> um, so understand this. Now, when I talk about the army of love, here is what I see. <laughs> and I've been seeing this for a while. I think it was um, really September when these visions were just like so put on me that I had no choice but to just go full in with it. When we're talking about like, <laughs> I love you guys too. When we're talking about the war between good and evil or how our planet is rising in frequency and those who can match the frequency are going to be like going on to new earth and stuff like that it gets a little confusing you're like well what about the other ones you know what about the other people who can't match the frequency uh, are they going to be sent to the pits of hell like what wh what is this here's a vision that i've been seeing and helping with. So it's not really a vision, it's like what I 
do a lot when I'm not in uh, awake 3D life. What we're calling the war between good and evil, a lot of other dimensions and frequencies are going through this as well, but they're calling it the reclamation. They're saying it is time for all the adventurous adventurous souls to return home. Sort of like a prodigal souls kind of situation. So um, the um, army of light goes in and they send love into the darkest areas. And everyone, every soul that is shrouded in darkness or is like, acting at the moment like a demonic, you know, type being, as soon as the love hits them, all the darkness falls away and they return to whom they were before they started making choices that took them down on the road to perdition or whatever. And they are like, so grateful. They're like, thank you, thank you. Oh. And they uh, either join with the spreading of the light or they return to their soul family and get back to the work they were doing before they started turning you know dark and mean and evil and vindictive so it's not that's why they're saying it's not a war it's not a war between love and hate good and evil it is a reclamation it is fully embracing and loving everyone and everyone returning to whom they were Remember, we were all born in pure love and light. We're all born as aspects of God or aspects of source or aspects of divine being. Anytime we stepped away from that, that was by personal choice to have an experience. You may think, well, why would anyone choose to become a demon or, you know, a naughty reptilian or whatever? for the experience we're eternal beings and we are all together broadening the frequency of everything so you can't just send it up higher you got to send it wider deeper more resonance get you know so we got to work all our muscles speaking of which on saturdays 11 a.m eastern standard time i'm going to be leading a, a free one hour 11 a.m to 12 noon Eastern Standard Time live stream on working the different chakras so that you have the structural, the energetic structural integrity to manage this. So, sorry, long rambling speech later. Normally, I would have an all day workshop to get people to this point. Um, understand that we are all of us connected, we are all of us eternal beings. There's no such thing as real evil. It's perceived evil by one who has stepped away from love, but everyone has in their core, everyone. I don't care what dimension, what frequency you're in, everyone has in their core the aspect of love. And um, right now on earth, we are beginning the cycle where we are going to return to it. Um, it's going to be rough, you know, trust me, the visions that I get make this whole coronavirus thing look like the tip of the iceberg. Um, but I don't want to scare you guys because on the other side of that, I see a beautiful harmonic future. Um, which is why I say stay safe, keep your frequency up and use common sense. Keep yourself sanitary, safe, protected because we need as many light being souls as possible to get through this. Um, so how do we, when we are alone in our apartment, how do we earth, how do we ground? For any of you who have ever given or received distance energy healing, it's the same sort of thing. Earth is not just dirt under your feet. Earth is all around us. It's a frequency. It's a resonance. If you do a meditation where you connect your soul with the resonance of Earth, 
or the resonance of trees or the Schumann resonance or any kind of frequency, crystalline, animal, mandala, whatever, you will be connecting directly with them. Some of you joined when I channeled the Elephant Collective and they took us in to experience what it's like to be an elephant. That's on my YouTube channel if you're looking for it uh, or if you want to join it. And I'll tell you, I was expecting them to share with us what it's like to physically be an elephant. So I was as surprised as everyone else when the Elephant Collective shared what it's like to be the soul of an elephant and connect with the elephant mandala. So if you're looking for a good meditation to like learn how to connect with um, a mandala or any aspect of earth when you're physically closed off from it, that, that's a, a good one. So think of distance healing. When I do a Prana Shakti distance healing, I can tell you it is always even more powerful than when I do in-person healing because I get myself completely aligned and I connect on the highest level of frequency. Um, so what's this? Meryl checking say, hi Meryl. I've been called by an old soul by many people that I don't know. That's awesome, Meryl. Then we are expecting you to come forward loud and proud to send love to our planet. Any of you have been called an old soul and you're like, that's strange. You're being recognized and now is your time. Absolutely. So it's all connecting through the heart. This is the time to really shut your brain off. Your brain is only used for technical function of getting your heart and whatever other chakra feels called to join in to be in alignment with what you're connecting to. So here's a wonderful thing. <laughs> yes, it's all wonderful. Here's the wonderful thing. When you connect with your heart chakra and then connect to earth, Mother Earth, Gaia, is not just the mother of our planet. She is the mother of all physical reality. She's the one who designed 3D physical reality. And some of you were there with her or came soon after. So understand that, especially our old soul friends. When we're talking old soul, if we're eternal beings, how old are you? Don't think back 100, 1,000, 10,000 years. Think back billions and billions of years and honor yourself for that. If I said you may have been here when Gaia designed physical reality, if any part of you said, yes, that feels right, then know it and claim it. Do not doubt yourself. So when you connect with Earth, and you allow yourself through meditation, which we'll do in a moment, to go into Earth. From Earth being held in Gaia's loving arms, you can transport yourself to any physical reality location, the other end of the universe, Mars, wherever you want to go. This is a very fun activity to do while you're sitting in quarantine wondering what to do. Go visit other planets. If you go to another planet, you may find when you look at it, everything is desolate. You go to Mars and you're like, there's no life on Mars except maybe a few microbes somewhere. If you shift to another frequency, or another timeline, you may find life teeming all around you. So these are fun activities for you to try. And how do you do it? Just truly have all your focus in the process. Let your shopping list or your worries or whatever stay right out there for the moment. If you are completely one with the experience and you go forward with total faith, then 
something amazing will show up. It will probably take a few trips, a few efforts, because, you know, you're bumbling around right now. But the day will come when um, you get into alignment and you're like, okay, Gaia, drop me down and clunk, you're in the center of Earth. And from the center of Earth, you're like, Gaia, take me someplace awesome and clunk. You find yourself going up through Io, through some planet. So um, I, it's sort of like, for me, it's like an elevator experience, but most of the time, but play with it, play with it. It's unique for each person. Okay. So these are the things that you have to accept as reality because these are my reality. And if you're going to play with me, these are the uh, rules of the home turf where I play. So how do we do earthing? It's wonderful if you have plants around you that you can connect with or an animal or a crystal or even like copper balls. But um, if you don't, don't worry. Um, because you have your imagination. So earthing is, you know, if possible, when you're barefoot and you put your feet on the ground and you feel the energy of earth beneath you, that's earthing. It's also if you go to a beautiful park and you sit on a bench and you just look around at all the flowers and the garden, and listen to the birds, that's earthing it's not anything like oh let's see oh thank you leah you know it's not anything that like you have to be some grand master for it's just a matter of remembering that we are each creatures of earth and letting yourself be one with that so let's take a moment let yourself relax and I will talk you through a, an earthing meditation. It doesn't matter if your eyes are open or closed, and it doesn't matter how you are breathing, just allow yourself to relax, be comfortable, fill your body with oxygen, give your body permission to relax. If you'd like, you can even lie down for this on the floor, on a sofa, on your bed. Sit however you're comfortable. Give your feet permission to relax. Give your hands permission to relax. It's not necessary for you to take any action. Just by giving your body permission your body knows what to do. Your body knows how to breathe without permission, knows how to digest your dinner without permission. And it knows how to breathe without permission. Sit and relax for a moment. I'm going to move everything under cover. It's starting to rain. So I'm going to unhook and just relax and breathe. I'll be right back. Of course, as soon as we connect with nature, nature comes falling down to be one with us. How beautiful. So relax. 
Give your body permission to just melt. With your imagination, allow yourself to be lying in a beautiful summer meadow high up on a mountain top with wildflowers all around. Just lying and relaxing with the cool earth beneath you. The warm sun shining down upon you. Gentle breeze rifling over your body through the tall grass. Keeping a perfect balance to the energy, the temperature. You can smell the flowers and the moist greenery. If you listen, you hear the birds in the trees. You can hear a babbling brook somewhere nearby flowing down. A little distance away, you can see a forest beginning. You can feel the energy of the trees as the breeze sways through their leaves. And you know they're full of all kinds of beautiful wildlife. Families of deer nursing young fawns, squirrels and chipmunks with their constant territorial disputes birds, raccoons sleeping away the day in some little burrows or treetops. Just breathe in, feel the sun on your face, the soil on your back. And call out, Earth Mother, Gaia, Pacamama, I am here. I, your child, I am here. I love you. And I feel your love to me. And you feel a swelling of love rising up from earth, enveloping you. Hmm. You feel Gaia's maternal arms wrapping around you, cradling you like you're a newborn babe. She says to you, my child, I am always with you. I will always love you. I am so proud of you for the life you have chosen to live. I am so grateful to you for the championship that you give to me. You feel how pure her love for you is. As you lie there, nestled in your mother's divine arms, relaxing on the ground, feeling the frequency of Earth, 
the resonance of our planet. It's like a symphony, a symphony of frequency. Each living being has its own energy and connects with the kindred energies, creating mandalas of frequency networks. The cricket mandala, the cardinal mandala, the opossum mandala, each one has a harmony that is special. And when all these harmonies are woven together, there is a cloak of love and protection that is draped upon our Divine Mother. As you lie there, you can feel your energy your divine connections, your frequency, the mandala of love that you resonate with. You feel how, to, how it is woven into earth, all the mandalas of our planet, Indeed, we are each of us when we are physical and aspect of our Divine Mother. And when we are etheric in our soul form and aspect of our Divine Father. When we are in physical life, connecting with our Divine Mother, and we're aware of our souls, we work with our souls, we are one with them, then we are also our Divine Father, which allows us to bring the love of all dimensions, the love of Source and all frequencies through us into Earth. Open yourself up. Invite all your soul's connections, all of the etheric mandalas of love to flow in, flow into you. Use your body as a conduit to fill you up, flow through you straight into our Divine Mother's arms. So beautiful. Give yourself a moment to feel this connection, to resonate with it. Imprint so that you can return to this anytime you like. And even explore all the wonderful mandalas and frequencies. Remember, everyone and everything that exists in 3D, bonded with our Divine Mother, also has a soul collective bonded with our Divine Father. It is our ability as we go forward with life, especially at this time, to bond and connect and flow, connect with the crystal mandala and the soul level of the crystal mandala. Connect with the birds, the animals, the soil, 
and what is their soul level. As we connect with the earth and become one with the earth, we can start connecting with the other planets and their soul levels until we feel bonded with everyone and everything on every level. Remember, this sort of frequency, the more we bring of it to our planet, even if you're sitting all alone in a room, this is very real, it's very healing, and it will help our planet going forward. Thank you all so much. Wow. Give yourself a hug. <laughs> Love yourself. That was beautiful. I didn't even know what was going to come through with the meditation, but Gaia told me it was going to be good. <laughs> but it was her direction we did this. So that was lovely. Thank you all. Um, I want to uh, just take a moment. Be in awe of yourself and the mandala that we connected between all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Jo. I love you too. And thank you, Sarah. Um, this cape is part of a hoodie. It's actually the hood of a hoodie. And I'm going to show you something in a moment. So, um, whoops. <laughs> I am so clumsy right now. Did you notice as soon as that meditation started, it started raining here and all of the equipment work stopped. And as soon as the meditation stopped, it stopped raining here. That is so cool. So, um, let's see, I just want to make a mention, for the time being, so long as we're all in quarantine, I am going to uh, try to do little daily uh, events as often as I can. Um, yesterday got away from me, but I'll, tomorrow morning at 11, I'm going to do something. Wait, hold on. I'm turning you guys away for a second. There we go. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know what this is, Many people equate it with like the Black Plague and with global death. Um, <laughs> well, let's just say I got a black sense of humor. This is actually uh, tomorrow. We are going to talk at 11 morning Eastern Standard Time on herbal self-care. Okay, so I'm not going to say herbal healing because at the moment no one knows what will actually heal or cure the coronavirus, but the more proactive self-care you give, the better. So just so you know, this uh, mask here was designed for the doctors in, during the Black Plague because uh, they would stuff the bottom full of uh, herbs, fresh herbs. Uh, one, because they're walking around rotting death all the time, so it smelled bad, but two, they used very specific herbs and spices in here that were known to prevent um, the, the Black Plague. They were preventative. And then um, I was talking with uh, Uma, Uma Alexandra Bipat of Lotus and Light. She's a person that I buy a lot of my uh, doTERRA supplements through. She's like amazing. She turned me on to this doTERRA on guard. And I'll put a link to Uma's um, uh, website if you want to order any online. And this is the same basically as like a health shield. Um, and 
any of these, Uma told me it's an antiseptic. I believe you can use sanitizing, but <coughs> it's intense. But these are the specific spices and herbs that Uma told me the story. I don't have all the details right. That um, long ago, I forget if it was King of England, King of France, whatever, wanted to find out, like wanted to catch the grave robbers because these grave robbers were going in and digging up corpses and stealing all the jewelry off them. And he also wanted to know how did they manage to do this without dying. So this stuff is based on what's called the Thieves Blend, which is a recipe of spices that the grave robbers used as an antiseptic to keep themselves from catching whatever bacterial blech was, you know, on all the corpses. I also, the doTERRA... Oh, on guard um it's a uh, throat drops and i can tell you the whole airplane flight the two-day journey from mexico back to here i had my mother and me like constantly sanitizing our hands spraying this sucking on these drops so um uh, anyway, there's a lot that I do herbally, including um, Ceylon cinnamon, organic Ceylon cinnamon. Wait, sorry. Organic Ceylon cinnamon. This is a brand that I bought off Amazon. It's pretty good. And um, Anato. Anato uh, seed. Um, I make a tea from these. Uh, because I read about how in the 1918 uh, Spanish flu epidemic, people who worked in cinnamon factories were immune to all the flu bugs. And I'm not, so anyway, tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going over with you guys the preventative herbal uh, care that I use, including like the green shake that I make every day and all that stuff. Um, I don't know what will or won't be relevant to you. This is just what I find, what I think will work for me and my family. Fingers crossed. Uh, but if I have information that you find valuable, I'm happy to share it. So until tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. <laughs> um, I hope, to, oh, now it's a dunce cap. Awesome. <laughs> So uh, I'm going to sign off now and I'll be back uh, Thursday morning, 11 a.m. Um, thank you all. Thank you all. And I think Uma and I have like one or two more spots available for anyone who wants to join our message circle tonight. It's last I checked, I think we had 13 of the 15 spaces filled. So I'll put the link to that here also. Thank you guys. I'm just so grateful for my connection with you. And, um, you know, we are a mandala of love. So I thank you. I thank you for including me with your connections. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, except for those of you like Leah, thank you, whom I will be seeing tonight at the message circle. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye.